Hey everyone, I want to end my new computer vlog series with a bit of a retrospective. I want to go back and look at what my goals were with this computer build and whether I've met those goals, things that I might do differently, things that went well, things that surprised me, that sort of thing. One of the goals I had was to be able to play newer games than I could previously. And that has, of course, absolutely been met because before I was either butting up against the minimum requirements for some newer AAA games, or in some cases actually below the minimum requirements. And of course, well, with a newer computer that is not a problem anymore. For one example, I've been playing Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus, which my old computer in the video card department was literally the minimum requirement for the video card. Which would have been... I, honestly, that probably would have been pretty much unplayable. It may have been playable if I wasn't recording, but when you add recording on top of it, the overhead that causes, it probably wouldn't have even been playable. So that's one that has run not just well, but it's run beautifully on the new computer. Absolute max settings, 1440p, never goes below 60 FPS, uh, records perfectly smoothly without any harm to how the, the game's running or the recording stuttering or anything like that. Everything is just perfect, buttery smooth. And of course, the minimum requirements issue was just becoming more and more of a problem. So it's nice to not have to worry about whether this new game that I want to play is actually going to be playable for me. Now I just don't have to worry about that for many, many years. A couple other goals I had was to be able to upload 1440p videos without any stuttering at 60fps, which, of course, <laughs> as I just mentioned, I absolutely met that. Yeah, this computer kicks complete ass and it has absolutely no problem playing anything I can throw at it on max, 1440p, 60fps, without any sort of slowdown in either the game or the recording. I was actually running into some odd recording issues with my old computer on things that I didn't think I would actually have issues with. For example, I was playing through the game Kona, which is fairly graphically intensive, but I'm far and above, my old computer was far and above the minimum requirements, and it actually ran pretty well for me as a player, so playing it, the experience was pretty dang good. But for some reason, my recording was consistently pretty choppy. I ended up trying to do a lot of things to try to fix it. I tried to make sure nothing was running in the background that I didn't need running to free up some CPU power. Uh, I set the affinity for OBS to very, very high. I was thinking maybe I could get OBS to have good performance and maybe the game would have a little bit less good performance because I'd rather the recording be good than the performance for me be good. The recording's more important to me. But even the affinity thing didn't seem to do anything. It just was always choppy in the recording. Now I've got double the cores with the, the Ryzen 2700X and I have CPU cycles to spare, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. Everything is just perfectly smooth. Another goal I had for the new computer was to be able to edit videos a lot faster. With my old computer, I was having really slow edits and that was because I was editing videos on mechanical hard drives, which of course are vastly slower and have a lot higher latency than SSDs. I did have an SSD in my old computer, but it was 250 gigabytes, and that was just housing my OS and my key programs and uh, one or two games that I could fit on it. If it was a AAA game, like for example, I've been playing the Wolfenstein games, and those are around 40 to 50 gigabytes each. So when it comes to massive AAA games like that, I could fit maybe one of them on my hard drive at the same time as everything else. And after all that, there just wouldn't be enough room to store recordings or do any sort of editing on the SSD, so I had to relegate that to my very large but very slow mechanical hard drives. The reason editing was taking so long is because when I recorded anything that was a high detail 3D game that had a lot of movement, I would often get recordings that were 20, 30 gigabytes, and now I'm getting recordings that are sometimes around 40 to 50, since I'm recording in higher quality. And with those massive files on a mechanical hard drive, when I import them into Adobe Premiere Pro, which is what I use to edit videos, the first thing that happens when you import the .mp4 file is it conforms. Conforming is basically Adobe Premiere preparing the file for editing, so you really do have to wait for that to finish before you can edit it. And as you can imagine, going through a 30, 40, maybe 50 gigabyte file on a mechanical hard drive would take a long time. So sometimes I would just... Uh, start the Adobe Premiere project for the episode, drag the file in, and then have to wait five to ten minutes until it's done conforming. And then after it conforms, I would send the audio over to Adobe Audition so I could do the processing that I do on my voice, like noise removal and the compressor. And so that would also have to open a very large sized file, all the audio for the video, which is smaller than the full video, but still quite large. And that could take up to maybe a minute to open sometimes. And then I have to apply the effects to it, which could take anywhere between two to five minutes. 
And then I have to save the file, which saving a very large file to a mechanical hard drive once again could sometimes take a couple minutes. And all in all, after waiting for the video to conform and exporting it and importing it and applying effects and saving it and waiting for all that stuff, sometimes for a 30 minute episode, it could take me 10 to 20 minutes sometimes for uh, all the processing to finish so that I can actually start editing. This is all before me actually editing anything. This is just getting it to the point where the audio is done and I can edit the video. So it was taking a while. That was pretty frustrating. So to fix this issue, I got a one terabyte SSD for my main drive. And that was plenty big for holding games and OS and programs, and also a pretty good buffer size for my videos. And it's worked fantastic. All those pre-editing steps of conforming and saving and exporting and all those things are vastly faster. The most the conforming takes is one to two minutes at the absolute maximum if it's a very large, like, 50 gigabyte file. So it's way faster. I can really get editing pretty fast after starting a new project. I also wanted to simplify just my whole hard drive structure and, and workflow on my computer. So previously, like I said, I had the 250 gig SSD and I also had two one terabyte mechanical hard drives. I tried to set it up so that I could get a little bit more speed out of my two hard drives. I would record to one and then I would actually render my video to another hard drive so that it would be writing the finished video from a different hard drive than it was reading the data from. So kind of trying to spread the uh, the IO load between the two hard drives to make it a little bit faster. But yeah, the whole thing was just kind of a little bit ridiculous and annoying to deal with. I've solved most of that just with that one terabyte SSD, but also I decided to get an external four terabyte traditional mechanical hard drive. Being external is nice because it allows me to save some space and don't have to block any airflow inside of my rather small case. Um, and it's also just nice that it's portable. Very handy. And having it be four terabytes and just one hard drive instead of two meant that it was really easy to figure out where to put stuff and not have to juggle things back and forth too much. When my SSD gets a bit too full, I just transfer some of my old finished videos and old source videos from my SSD to my mechanical hard drive. So they can stay there for a while until it fills up and then I have to delete the oldest ones on it. So kind of just pushing stuff into storage until I need to deal with it. Uh, I also have enough space on the 4TB hard drive to make complete image backups of my main SSD. Overall, the workflow is just a lot faster and a lot simpler. When it comes to editing the vast majority of videos that I make, which is game playthroughs, the new computer has absolutely met my goals for that. However, sometimes, and I'm trying to do more of it now that I have a, a faster computer, I'll sometimes make videos that aren't the usual thing and are a bit fancier and involve lots of effects. Things like Warp Stabilize, which I used in some tiny little bits in my computer building vlog. Things like location tracking and, and blurs and animated text and just, you know, fancy stuff. <laughs> stuff that I don't usually do in my playthroughs. That sort of stuff I've done a little bit and I'd like to do more of it. And when it comes to that, surprisingly, the new computer has actually not really helped that be much faster. It's always been pretty slow in Premiere. And I, I guess it's probably a bit faster, but it's still pretty slow. Doing all those things still takes a long time. For example, using Warp Stabilize on a, let's say, 20 second clip could sometimes take a couple minutes. So I have to wait a couple minutes to see whether the effect that I'm trying to put on the clip even looks good at all. So there's quite a bit of waste of time, uh, downtime, just waiting for stuff to render so I can even see what the heck it looks like. Another thing which is just completely absurd to me is I found out that Premiere has these graphics templates for text. So for example, you get like scrolling end credits and you just type in your own text, but they they automatically set up all the, the font choice and the movement and stuff like that. And I use this one template where text would sort of teleport in, kind of. It was a very simple effect. It wasn't like it had a huge cloud of particles or anything like that. I don't even think it had really any particles at all. And yet, something as simple as that, Adobe Premiere on my new computer could not even play in real time. Worse than that, I had to pre-render it to be able to view it for maybe 20 seconds? I had to pre-render text appearing and disappearing in a very simple manner. A very mildly animated manner. It was the most absurd thing to me. I think that's what made me realize that one of the issues with using Premiere is not so much do I have a powerful enough computer, but it's actually Premiere kind of sucks at some stuff. For the usual thing I make, gameplay videos, it's great. The workflow is really nice for it and it's pretty dang fast. But for more effect heavy stuff, even relatively simple effects, it does not make good use of my computer at all. 
I've looked at it at exactly what resources it's using when it's trying to do some of these effects that are taking way longer than they should ever possibly take. And it will just barely be using the hard drive, and barely be using the video card, and barely be using the CPU, so it's not running into any sort of a resource limit on my computer. It's most likely something like it's single-threaded, maybe. Maybe it's running in a single thread and isn't making use of the 16 freaking threads that I have on my CPU, for example. So, Premiere could definitely be improved, and when it comes to that, the new computer hasn't really helped with it. This has got me thinking about whether I maybe want to try switching video editors. The thing about switching, though, is that it would be a lot of work to try to learn how to use new programs, and for a reward that might not even be there, because whatever I try might not actually have the features that I want, or might not be good enough for what I want to do. Maybe the performance of a new program that I'll try won't even be any better than Adobe. In which case, well, that's wasted time. Also, the thing about Adobe is that I don't just have Adobe Premiere, I have Adobe Creative Cloud, which is a subscription service that gives you access to all of the Adobe suite of tools. So if I switch to another program, for example, I've heard good things about DaVinci Resolve. I'm thinking of possibly trying that, however, the Adobe Creative Cloud gives me access to not only video and audio editing tools, but also things like Photoshop, which I use to make thumbnails for videos. So if I switch to something like DaVinci Resolve, well, I would have a video editor. I believe it has an audio editing suite built into it, but I don't think it has anything like Photoshop. So what would I do about that? And then there's all the other questions, like, will DaVinci actually perform any better? Does it have the audio tools that I need? For example, does it have something that's equivalent to Adobe Edition's adaptive noise removal, which is very important? Just for that feature alone, if whatever I switched to didn't have that, I would not switch. It would need to have something equivalently good, because that would significantly reduce my audio quality, and that's just totally unacceptable to me. So it's something I'm considering, but there's definitely a lot of momentum to keep doing what I'm doing right now, because it's working pretty damn well. Another goal for the build was to make a computer that's compact and quiet. And I've totally met those goals with this computer. I was very careful about selecting my parts to make sure that they were quiet, especially when it comes to the CPU and the video card. Especially the video card, because historically that has always been the loudest part for me. As someone who cares about audio quality, it's really important to me that after playing a game that's really intensive for 10 minutes, I don't hear next to my ear for the entire rest of the time I'm playing the game, which is typically what would happen with every previous video card I would have. They were loud as hell, they'd sound like jet engines once they revved up and got completely heat saturated. Not to mention I typically leave my computer on overnight while I'm sleeping so that it can render videos and upload stuff, so it's nice if the computer's quiet while I'm trying to sleep. And all of that's in a case that's way smaller than anything I've ever had before, which is important to me because I'd like it to be relatively convenient to take this with me when I move to Finland, and also, everywhere that I've lived has been relatively small apartments, so just having it be fairly small is pretty important to me. If I was to build this computer again, I think pretty much the only thing I'd do differently is I would make sure that I installed probably all of the standoffs between the case and the motherboard to give the motherboard more backing support so that when I go to press really hard on it, such as with a power cable or especially trying to put in the RAM modules, so that I wouldn't bend the PCB alarmingly. Also, this wasn't really an explicit goal with my new computer, but the new monitor that I got was not only 1440p, but also an IPS panel type. Previously, all my monitors were a TN panel. TN panels are significantly cheaper and can typically reach higher refresh rates, but the downside is compared to an IPS panel, their viewing angles are terrible and their color reproduction and contrast is significantly worse. So I wanted to see what I was missing by never having used an IPS panel type as a monitor for my computer. And the answer is a hell of a lot. 1440p is fantastic, I really love that. But honestly, probably just as important to me now that I am actually have been using it, is the fact that it's an IPS panel. It is so much better than my old monitor. Colors look way more vibrant, way more smooth and consistent because you don't have the viewing angle problem. Uh, areas in games that look are supposed to look black actually look black rather than gray. It just everything looks so much richer and better. So that's sort of a side benefit of my new build. I want to thank everyone who's watching this because this is really only possible because of you. If it wasn't for financial support from Patreon backers, viewers, and GoFundMe supporters, I wouldn't have felt comfortable buying this. And if it wasn't for knowing that there's actually viewers out there that want to watch my videos, 
that will actually benefit directly and, and indirectly from this new computer that allows me to play games that I couldn't otherwise or play them in higher quality or edit faster, be happier while actually making videos. If it wasn't for that, I would have no reason to really care. So just having viewers also has made this possible. So thanks again, everyone. And I'm looking forward to making videos on this machine for years to come.